May 23rd, 2022, the IMF at Davos, Switzerland said, the world economy is going to hit the biggest financial headwind since World War II. What does that mean? That's what we want to talk about. But more importantly, what can you do? Yeah. And we talked about it is, you know, when you think about what are your assets today, if you're hanging out with idiots, you're probably an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is very important because the game these financial planners play is they only show you charts going back to 1981. And this is when Paul Volcker raised rates. So since then, we've been in a down cycle in interest rates. And sure, you can say the stock market always goes up right if interest rates are always going down. But what happens when interest rates start going back up? And usually the cycle is about 30, 40 years. So if you look at charts of the stock market going back to 1927 to 1980 or 81 adjusted for inflation, it was pretty much flat. But see, they don't tell you that. Right. They just cherry pick the data of course. they want to give to you in order for them to collect their fees. But something even worse happening is the last crash was, let's say, 2008 when the repo market reversed and all this stuff. And most of these financial planners and real estate brokers, all they know is a rising market. Yeah, that's right. You know, since 2008, we've been nothing and happy days are here again because they kept dropping interest rates. Real estate went up, stock market went up, bond markets went up. Yeah. The problem with that is that the bull goes up the stairs. Yeah, the bear comes out the window. When it comes, it's four months. Yeah. That's how fast this bear is going to go out the window. So, no, it'll never go down. I'm going, when, the moment I hear that, I know it's going down. <laughs> yeah. And there's always, you know, Jim Rogers, I think, articulated it beautifully. You've just got to buy panic and sell hysteria. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you can tell when there's hysteria. The problem with bull markets is it makes stupid people look smart. <laughs> yeah. And the saying is, the bull goes up the stairs, bear goes out the window. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down, it comes down fast. My question is, though, I didn't know people were committing suicide. Mm -hmm. This is deja vu all over again, because in 1929, the saying was, watch out for falling bankers. Because mm -hmm. they were yeah. coming out of the window, killing people in the street below. Yeah. But at the end of the day, who do you blame? The Fed. It's the Fed. Because this is all just pe pushing Stupidity. people out the risk curve. So the whole thing here is, you know, get smarter. That's what we're talking about. Or at least hang around smart people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh my God. You know, it's going to be the, we're going to make so much money because we have carbon credits. <laughs> And we have biotech coming online and all that. There's more opportunity today, yeah. but not if you hang out with idiots. I do think there's incredible opportunities, but I think it would come in pretty much the opposite arena. And that's just old school commodities. I think we're oh, going absolutely. into a long-term super cycle. Absolutely. I think you're going to see prices of, of things like coal, uranium. And I think the overarching theme and pretty much everything that you've said for the last 30 or 40 years is if you're going into an investment and everyone else is doing it and that's what they're teaching you in school, you're probably not going to make money. You're probably going to lose money. But if you're going into an investment and every single person is telling you, Robert, you're crazy. What are you right. talking about? You're don't, absolutely out of your don't mind. Do it. Don't do that. Those are the investments where you've made the most money. And it's been the exact same thing. You know, like we have no stocks, bonds, or mutual funds because my rich dad taught me differently. So today, you know, like I was saying, and I said this all the time, we own oil wells. We don't oil oil companies. We don't own yeah. stocks. So again, when Biden cut the XL pipeline off, well, went from 30 to 130. Holy mackerel, we're making so much money today. The dangerous thing is people are being wiped out. Yeah. Inflation's killing them, yeah. food That's right. and fuel. That's right. That's what scares me. Yeah, but any intervention they have in a free market economy, it's always going to make things worse for yeah. the poor and middle class, oh, yeah. whether it's through the insidious, you know, invisible tax of inflation, or whether it's just propping up uh, assets that are creating you know, these bubbles where people get completely wiped out and misallocation of resources and malinvestment. I mean, th we've got to understand that central planning or Marxism, as you always say, this is a very, very slippery slope. This oh, is God. the road to ruin. Or as Jim Rogers says, you know, this is the quick path to the poorhouse. We need to understand that free market capitalism is not perfect. But it's the best system we have to raise this uh, standard of living for the poor and middle class. And we're going so Marxist. That's why I'm 
So many kids, oh, if I go to college, I'll be fine. That's what you got taught Marxism. You know, they talk about, you know, tax the rich and all these other things they teach, but they think that's frightening today is what Klaus Schwab is saying. Someday you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Right. That's the abolition of private property, which yeah. is Marx. Yeah. And that's what they're teaching the kids. Absolutely. And the crazy thing is they're trying to use inflation as a reason to tax the rich. And it's just completely perverse because the way you solve consumer price inflation Produce more. is, by, like we were saying, by producing more stuff. And, you know, if you're taxing all the people that are producing, are we going to have less stuff in the future? Are we going to have more stuff? No, but as you said, the money just moves. Yeah. Right? We move to where we're treated the best. Yeah. And inflation is the worst tax of all. And it just causes more people as we're going to shift to UBI, Universal Basic Income, totally and totally MMT, agree. which is Marxism. Someday you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. The yeah. government will give you your money. I really want to beat this dead horse because I think it's important. Good. We are experiencing global consumer price inflation right now. Right. Not just in the, this is a huge, huge problem. Global crisis since World War II. Yeah, absolutely. And their solution is to do what? UBI. Let's give people more money. And let's restrict the supply of goods and services even further by making it harder for the producers to actually produce. So what they're doing, they're trying to sell this to the general public. The way we solve consumer price inflation is by creating more money and producing less stuff. It's the complete opposite. opposite. Yeah, we need less money and we need more stuff. When you give people money, does it increase the debt? It depends on how that money is generated. But I understand, but somebody's got to pay the piper in there. Yeah, usually it's going to be produced through the issuance of new debt. So if it's the government issuing new debt for that deficit spending, or if it's a bank issuing new consumer debt, then you've got a loan to match up with that new money that was created. Yeah. So is there any money in a credit card? It's debt. And that's how money is created. Yeah. It's, you have to borrow it into existence. Yeah, that's right. That was 71. You have to borrow the money and money is created. That was a yeah. fractional reserve system. Fractional reserve system says you put your savings in a bank, let's say $100, the bank can lend out 1000 10 to 1 leverage in there. Yeah, now they don't even need that. No. They can just create money out of nowhere. And that goes back to the central bank digital currency and them trying to ban cash. And I think that's why so many young people are in crypto. They know something's wrong. They just don't have the big macro picture of it. Mm -hmm. And they get caught up in all these swings. So you were talking about CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. What does that mean to you, George? Well, a Central Bank Digital Currency simply means that all the average Joes and Janes in society, including the businesses and corporations, now have an account with the Central Bank. In our case, it would be the Federal Reserve. But well, isn't that Marxism, central banking? It's absolutely 100% central planning.